Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. Hang out with some of the crew. I'm Ted. I'm Nate. And uh, today we want to bring you a Monster BFF. But before that, let Ted tell you about the you newsletter. And if you want to get some some cool uh, gaming tips, you want to learn how to game with us, and you want to get some cool stuff, sign up for the newsletter. Go to the description down below. Click the link. Put in your name. Put in your email address. It's the only way to get get this all and get awesome nerdarchy stuff. right in your inbox. So you can stay nerdy all the time. That's it. Or at least once a week when I send you an email. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so today, right? We want to do the hobgoblin cavalry, mounted on, on face spiders. So we got hobgoblins which start on page. I'm trying to read here in the dark. Uh, 185. And we got face spiders in your trusty fifth edition monster manual on 334. So hobgoblins are actually my favorite goblinoid. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of my favorite monstrous humanoids. To be honest with you, it's really close between them and gnolls. Mm -hmm. Um and you know basically you know you have goblins that are kind of craven and and uh cowardly yeah, yeah they're the losers of the goblinoid world <laughs> and then you got bugbears that are lazy layabouts and bullies they're like the slack off ogre version of the goblins yeah yeah, yeah. but then you got the hobgoblins they just got their shit together <laughs> it's like all right we're all about war we're all about physical might we're all, we're all about strategy and you know they're going to form these giant legions and march over anything in their path and they're just going to conquer stuff. That's what hobgoblins are all about. And, you know, I've done, um, in the past, I've done Viking hobgoblins. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our, our Ice Raider hobgoblins, you know, near Trinemet. We did in a video. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to slap these bad boys on uh, some, spiders. some face spiders. And, you know, like, you know, we're like, well, it doesn't really say the face spider can bring a, a rider with them. Right. And Nate's like, well, what about a special harness made of wood? But that made me think it's not made of wood. It's it's made of uh, face spider silk. Mm. And, they, you know, maybe they harvest, you know, maybe that's how they do it. You know, they make these harnesses or maybe even suits out of uh, silk that the riders have to wear. And because they have it on them, it kind of like... Uh, lets them get pulled along for the ride yeah, when they, they jump. Like a, some kind of jerkin or jacket. Otherwise, if you know, if, if they couldn't go with them, you're talking about the worst cavalry ever. <laughs> <laughs> they phase out, and everyone, all these hobgoblins are sitting on their asses on the ground. <laughs> so you know, I, I envision a uh, like a group of, of hobgoblins like do, totally doing a charge, and like you have to be you know part of the ground crew and survive a, a, an assault. Before you're you're allowed into into the cavalry because the cavalry rides out and either you know flanks or surrounds the enemy. And, appears right in the middle, and of them. A, or or appears right in the middle of them. But they appear like mid swing and whatever have you, so they get that total surprise thing, you know, going. Uh, and I just think you know it'd be really fantastic to actually see that actually. Happen. Well, yeah, like the military strategies that you can employ. Uh, with with this kind of cavalry, mm -hmm. it, first of all, let, let's face it, you know, just being on spiders, right? Spiders have a climb speed. You you now you now can move in multiple dimensions as long as they have things to, to walk on. Mm -hmm. um, face spiders have their webs, yes. right? They, they do have like a, some kind of web attack or something. Um, no, they can walk on webs. They have the ethereal jaunt, and they can uh, spider climb. So they're, uh, they're, okay. Their attacks is just a bite. Okay, but you know, I could, you know, even if they don't, but they could do things like, yeah, you know, they could be actually specialists and almost like um, military engineers as well. Mm -hmm. Like you know, creating bridges for yeah, people to go across. Bridges of spider silk. Or yeah. you know, rappelling down on their on their mounts. You know, these are things you know you can't typically do in combat, especially not a cavalry. Right. You know, so and it's perfect for a fantasy game. You know, and and you know the fact that. You know, spiders are are pretty darn sure-footed because they've got so many legs. Um, you know, you can take out a couple, and they still just keep on going. Um, and you know, they're nice. They're they're size large, so they're they're a perfect mount size for a standard character. Um, there's there's nothing about it. They're they've actually got a six intelligent so in, intelligence, so they they can be able to be trained. So they're 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 really fantastic. Well, not only that though, like when you when you put a hobgoblin on anything really, um, they they already excel. Martial advantage allows them they basically do an extra two die six of damage as long as there's a uh, they have an ally within five feet of their enemy. <laughs> They're riding their ally. You know, oh, so wow. this is just the standard hobgoblin. This yeah, because is, wow. it's a, because it's intelligent. 
Doesn't, so no, they it get doesn't a, matter. Ally. Well, so, they get a, so they get a sneak attack, pretty much, at yeah. it. Yeah. Specifically when... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man, that's that's harsh. Now, and not only that, you know, Hobgoblins have a pretty high armor class. For, for a half CR, an 18 armor class... Whoa. You know, uh, their normal damage is a die 8 plus 1. Yeah, you know, whatever, big deal. It's not... Die it's 8 not... plus 1 plus 2 die 6. Well, I would think they would yes. need some kind of... A cavalry, you need some kind of polearm, glaive, something. Yeah, I mean, you could go a long spear or lance or something, you know, if you didn't want to go sword. Um, but, I mean, even just the way it is, that's still fairly impressive. Oh, you yeah. Know, that they're going to do a decent amount of damage. You're going to have these these opportunities to be really creative in combat, especially mass combat, where you're going to be able to break the enemy ranks uh, just by, you know, your your ability to almost, like, teleport in the middle of them. Yeah, so it uh, it adds a stealth mode uh, motif to to a cavalry which they normally don't have right you know or you know repelling from trees and in, in the dead of night or down cliffs you know or or you know going over walls places that would uh, traditionally be impassable for you know for soldiers let alone uh cavalry oh, right so like i would find these guys terrifying <laughs> so like tactically we talked about it we talked about using them as a monster like as an encounter you know cuz you're looking at you know um, an, an XP budget of 800 per per unit per per rider and mount. So you know it you know it's a little bit it's going to be a little bit higher up. You could probably even use one of the like one of these uh, as a against a, a first level party, like and it might be a challenging encounter mm -hmm. as something interesting. Uh, but you know we like to also like delve into the story a little bit. Of like how this happened, like yeah, how did they allow themselves? Like you said, the, the face spiders are intelligent, right? The face spiders have an intelligence of six, so you know they're they're not an animal. No, you know, they, they fall under monstrosity, and uh, the um, the hobgoblins talk about being able to be trainers of beasts. So it's not unheard. It, it wouldn't be unheard of for them to be able to to come across. They a, see the value, you know, yeah, the, of of a, strate of a strategic alliance, right? Like that. So. They're like, okay, well, you know, you work with us, we'll get you food because the whole goal of hobgoblins is to move, is to conquer. They're not gonna, you know, they're not gnolls, they're not bugbears that are gonna just eat the flesh of their their kills, but the face spiders will. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, it's it's a win win situation, and I totally see, um, like, the the once the hobgoblins have looted the city. Like the phase spiders, then just turn it into this giant nest, lay a bunch of eggs, and you know move on with the, uh, you know move on with the rest of the horde, and like there's probably you know egg keepers or you know like some some kind of shaman and his cadre that stay behind to you know hatch the new eggs. Or you know what about like the. Uh the lands that are controlled by the hog islands like they could have this way cool citadel where the cavalry or the, the spider riders live mm -hmm. where literally it could be pretty much impassable without actually having you know this, without having a spider because mm. you're maybe you're, you're, you're traversing webs you well, know you're going up sheer surfaces you, you got teleporting you, you're 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 <laughs> only thinking in one dimension yeah with this alliance their their citadel is going to be in two dimensions because they can just go back and forth between the prime and the ethereal so they're going to have like a whole store a whole set of forces on the other plane as well they could have something they're, that's only accessible oh okay you're talking about having something in the ethereal plane yeah, yeah. Oh. i don't I, I don't see you know like with this alliance they wouldn't like the hobgoblins are going to be intelligent enough to be like well why why do we stick to just the prime what can we get from the ethereal that we can't get here yeah mm -hmm. so so it's possible that they might be like seeking just a location to cross over in another spot to get to the to their next goal yeah like they so. like they're finding these waypoints between the material and the ethereal plane that other people don't know like or, you know or they could even be like nomads that 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 use the ethereal plane to to traverse you know, um, the cosmos really. Mm. So, like, maybe only the spiders can jump wherever they want to, 
but because the spider is able to bring them over, they're able to find these natural nexuses where the rest of the troops, the hobgoblins, can move through between realms. But there's going to be resources on the ethereal plane that the hobgoblins want as well. So, like, they could literally be just, okay, well, we're going to march through whatever's in our way, and if it puts up a fight, we just kill it. Or they might just, their their ability to conquer or their desire to conquer says, well, we're just going to attack whatever's in our path. But it's not the actual town that we're attacking. It's the valley beyond that we want so that we can cross over there to get to this, you know, rich source of insert whatever they want. And, you know... Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe they train... They can train the spiders to actually, you know, sniff out these nexuses. And, and you know, and you, they become these strategic points. And, and maybe that's the only place they actually build their strongholds on the prime material or where these other nexuses are. Mm. So, you know, they, they can actually have these troop movements all over, you know, a globe. And, like, you know, they, they basically these other raiders that, like... Uh, Everyone else is like, I don't even know where they come from. Like, they just appear out of nowhere, uh, you know, screaming their heads off, uh, you know, through a door that no one sees, like like the mass, like, block of soldiers and some, the legions. Some farmer's boy, I just, I just saw them appear right out of the mist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, you know, and then all of a sudden the cavalry's, like, popping in anywheres and everywheres to wreak even more havoc. So, yeah. like, like it, that would be a really cool threat. Like this could be like a whole campaign based around this. Yeah, absolutely. You know where you know the players have to figure out what's going on, how to stop them, and and you know like maybe it, it could be several sessions before they even realize. Oh, you, this is how they do it. Like that's <laughs> the first thing they unravel. How do is like how do they appear from nowhere? How can you know? How are they making these giant dimension doors? Oh, they're not. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they just they they basically have these 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 maps of you know where the ether, ethereal and material plane crosses over. So that'd be a lot and of fun. What if they have some kind of cool like they found something that they really can use to their advantage beyond the, you know, the movement? But what if there's something in the? I mean, we don't really talk. There's not much on the ethereal plane for fifth edition at all. But what if there's some kind of like solidified crystals or some kind of crazy thing you can make. Uh, it's uh, always crystals uh, with this guy. A sa- uh, <laughs> like a spear blade out of. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking crystal because that would be kind of the closest thing, ethereal material. Yeah. Uh, that you can make objects and items out of that hold some kind of magic, but they'll they'll fade over time if you're not in the ether and back and forth. So it's kind of like they. They have these items. Uh, that dude, I could definitely see like them having items and weapons that almost have this ethereal wispy property to them. Yeah, like in appearance, but they're actually solid. Yeah, you know, I, I, but like like you said, maybe if they're not constantly exposed to the other plane, they will just kind of like blow away. Like yeah, they'll like fade away. So it it's kind of they 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 like these because they're maybe they count as magic items, magic weapons. What, you know, what if too? Like, what if they have to like they shape it? But in order for it to keep its shape, they actually have to use the spider silk, to uh, almost like a netting, to to make it hold the shape. But once it's yeah, like it, once it's there, it, it's stuck in that form. Mm. So so you know you, it has this like wispy, smoky, ethereal look to it. But it's also spider webs, with well spider webs. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it would just give this way cool appearance. Yeah, almost, almost like a, like some kind of like a wispy force weapon this like sheen you can see the little tiny like yeah but i'm thinking for their like armor and shields as well yeah but yeah i think it looked pretty cool you know maybe you know maybe their uh maybe one of their favorite weapons is like a glaive and i'm seeing like these like almost like not quite bamboo but almost looks a little like a cross between bamboo and birch with that really white color to it but Mm. more like the 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 texture of bamboo hmm and then uh, having these, you know, having that wispy uh, spider web in- encased blade attached to the end of it would be uh, uh, really cool. It would be a it would be a military advantage that would have them having to go back. So they've kind of like married this kind of concept of using the face spiders, and then they found these waypoints that they can go through and travel. And so they're like, heck, this is a great place. <laughs> Let's keep doing this. Yeah, so we need to like come up with this the, the name and the idea for this whole for our hobgoblins uh, ethereal raider society. I don't know. Maybe you guys can help us in the comments below while you're at it. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, you can head over to nerdarchy.com and check out some great articles there. You can also check out the forum while you're over at nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.